this is something that I found really cool is that you know, for Washington stock like AVGO or SMCI or even NVIDIA is just understanding, you know, when the Qs, XLK, XLC, and the MAG7 are also all in squeezes, because guess what? That's one of the institutions we're pointing at. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and why that's important. And then also this is kind of convergence where uh, a lot of algos and machines step in as well as the convergence of primary channels. And uh, so this is kind of a, that's kind of where we're going. And uh, we will talk a little bit about that. Um, so let's just kind of dive in. So I always like to do these things. I don't, you know, I know some of you are recognize a lot of you. Welcome. And we can just dive right into the tools and kind of what's happening now. But I also know that some of you that are brand new. Oh, breaking up. What? Hold on. Let me pull it. I think I know what it is. All right, is that any better? I had uh, some music playing in Google Chrome, and let me just try this again here real quick. And then, okay, so let me try this again. I'm just talking normally, just want to see that we are actually able to talk and there's no sound interruption or anything like that. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Chrome, if I'm playing music in my headphones in Chrome, there's some weird thing there that it just can't handle. It just can't handle it. So that's fine. That's easy. Um, imagine how frustrating that was when I didn't know uh, that that was causing it. Okay, excellent. So um, what I what I was talking about before, and you know, let me just kind of review uh, since you may not have heard it. because uh, of all the things there. And uh, so first of all, again, welcome. Welcome, everybody. And yeah, Chrome is just definitely weird. So what we're going to be talking about uh, tonight, and I just like to kind of show you a little bit of a preview, just kind of know where we're going, is just kind of the power of everyone playing together. So, you know, here's a stock with AVGO. And guess what? You know, I've noticed that when there's a 30-minute squeeze on AVGO, and there are also... 30 minute squeezes on the Qs and XLK and XLC and the Mag7, guess what? The moves tend to be stronger, you know, and if there's a squeeze without that, it can kind of fizzle out. So we want to talk a little bit about that. Also, of course, on daily charts as well. And then the other thing um, that comes up is, uh, you know, there, there's another thing that comes up that the computers and the algos are doing, and it's just basically convergence. And so in this case, it's when a 10 minute uh, 21 bar channel converges with the 21 day channel. Um, you you typically are going to get momentum coming in in the form of algos. And this also works on a daily chart. So when the 21 bar, uh, con this is Bitcoin, converges with the yearly bar, the average convergence is 55 days on Bitcoin. This con current convergence has lasted 87 days. So it gives us stats to kind of understand how that works. But anyway, that's that's what we're going to talk about. Just kind of want to give you a little, uh, you know, a little bit of a kind of a preview there. And then um, what I like to do is just since I know some of you, I recognize a lot of you. And we could just dive right into this. But I also like to back up for those of you that are, you know, if you've never heard me talk before or something like that. Let's just talk a little bit about, you know, kind of why, you know, why these tools, what's happening in the markets and all of that fun stuff. So what do we want to kind of talk about? And of course, you guys know that one of my favorite, you know, my favorite things to do are kind of the squeeze and then for day trades, kind of, you know, the kind of the quick hits, if you guys are familiar with that. And if you're not, that's fine. Um, what we found in this market is you're seeing moves like, you know, Coinbase, MSTR, SMCI, NVIDIA, AVGO. You know, there's a list there, you know, of stocks have had these kind of hyperbolic moves and they don't necessarily start with a squeeze. OK, what they do is they start with algorithms getting triggered and that pours more money into it and so we just kind of want to understand that and what is happening so what do i mean by convergence that we'll get well we'll get to that so a picture is worth a thousand words right so um so we want to talk about that those are kind of the factors fueling these moves uh, we want to how to avoid getting chewed up by these machines part of this is knowing when not to short you know there's going to become a time and a place and a day to short 
Uh, but I do see that a lot of times you're like, oh my God, you know, SMCI is at 600, we should short it. No, you got to wait till the convergence breaks. And then when it breaks, it's safer. Um, and then, you know, which stocks are the big money chasing and all that kind of stuff and why that's important. So trading, of course, if you guys have traded for more than a week, trading is not just about hoping for the best. All right. So right now there are insiders, a lot of insiders that are selling stock. Zuck, he's cashing in. Bezos, he's cashing in. Executives at NVIDIA, SMCI, the list goes on and on. They are cashing in. So why aren't they going down? Because somebody is buying them. And who are, who's buying them? We are. And by we, I don't mean just, you know, if you're sitting there with a $50,000 account or a million dollar account, that's part of it. But it's such a small fractional part of it. It doesn't necessarily make an impact. Um, we have given America and people all over the world have given permission for funds like BlackRock and Fidelity to manage our 401ks, our IRAs, our pensions. Um, we give it to money managers and everything like that. And collectively, this is trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And guess what? They are all they don't care about anything. They just want to make sure that they can keep up with the indexes. They're not worried about a top or anything like that. They only care about not getting left behind. That's where the momentum comes in. That's where these black box systems come in and things like that, too. And it is so important to be aware of that. So with this kind of stuff, I do like to focus on simple strategies. I do like to use options. You don't have to. You could just buy the stock itself, of course. If you are a more advanced options trader and you know you know, understand, understand things like credit spreads and debit spreads and butterflies, you can absolutely use those too. But all these setups are designed to like, I just want to buy a call or I want to buy a put. And that's it. So it's very simple. So if you're kind of new to this, you know, this is not about trying to, you know, collect premium or anything like that. It's just, man, there's some momentum going on. There's a greater than expected move. And guess what? That is the time to buy a call. So um, the other thing that you want to be careful of is that there are, you know, you guys know I love squeezes, right? And one of the things I found out is that not all squeezes are created equal. And if you get into the wrong squeeze and say you buy an out of the money call, you kind of experience what I call death by congestion, meaning that every day you just kind of watch your premium wither away as the stock does nothing. It's like, well, gosh, why? Why isn't this one doing nothing while other squeezes have worked really, really well? So that's what we want to talk about that tonight. Uh, so just real quick, this is the room. This is the account that I use in the trading room. Uh, at the end of this started off with, uh, $41,000 at the end of January, it was at $95,000 the last day of the year or the last day of the year, the last day of January, uh, I had a pullback in my account. Uh, but never, nevertheless, it was up 133%, but you'll notice here, I've got NVIDIA and SMCI and what am I doing? I'm waiting because we've got these powerful setups, uh, setting up and I'm fine being patient to wait for them to pay off. And we'll, we'll look at those setups. And then the very next first day of the month, boom, you know, it's like, and the video is up and then SMCI is up, you know, it's like, so it's a, it's a huge, you know, it's a huge win. And anyway, it's just been, this has been a year of just kind of, yeah, doing some day trades here and there, but being patient for when this stuff comes together. And I find that that's, you know, instead of having 17 different positions on, it's just like, okay, where, where is the money going? And then just doing that. Okay. So, so why, why is this all of, yeah, AMD as well. So why, why is this important? So it's really important to understand how this market is set up is it a real money account yeah it's not a not a demo account demo accounts i don't see any point in trading a demo account um so so i don't um well i say there's no point in trading a demo account if you've never used a platform before it helps to learn it but what you never learn is psychologically how you react when you have money on the line and so the only you only understand that you know when you're trading real money so start small build up your intestinal fortitude and go from there so, so, so this is what's important. Here's the S and P 500, and it's made up of these 11 sectors. And there's other sectors and stuff like that too. But you know, if funds want to keep up with the S and P 500, you know, they're going to be buying these. And if they want to outperform, what are they doing? Okay, well, geez, XLC 39% over the last year. Okay, XLY not bad, 15%. Okay, Amazon, right? And if we go down to XLV, you know, not bad with healthcare industrials, 46% XLK. Okay, so it's important to understand that XLK and XLC are outperforming. So what are the main stocks in those funds? So if you think of it this way, so if, if my, here's XLC. So XLC is made up of nearly 30% of Meta, 
Okay, and then 20%, 21% of Google, and that's of course Google and GOOG, the A class A and B shares. That makes up a large portion, um, nearly half, I guess that is half, nearly half of that sector. If you look at XLY, you've got Amazon and Tesla that are making up a little less than half of that sector. You know, in financials, of course, you got Berkshire and JP Morgan. Uh, industrials, I'm kind of cracking up that Uber is part of the industrials. That's actually kind of interesting, right? It's only 4%, but um, interesting there. And then of course, XLK, Microsoft makes up 23% of it. Apple, almost 20% of it. And NVIDIA, and I think this has got to be, they've got to rebalance this because NVIDIA is now a $2 trillion company. Um, I think, I guess these are $3 trillion companies. So that'll, that percentage will probably be added, which, you know, NVIDIA then kind of climbs even more. So it's important to understand here is that when fun, you know, they're allocating funds and Fidelity is like, all right, let's put a hundred million into XLC. What that means is 29.5 million is going into Meta, okay? You know, let's put 100 million into XLK. Okay, 23 million is going into Microsoft. So it's important to understand that you know it does take a lot of money to move those stocks, and money managers aren't sitting there going like, "Well, what stock do we buy?" They're like, no, they're they're allocating it. They just want to keep pace with the indexes, and so then they do that. They put money into these sectors. And then, of course, when money goes in, the, the, the ETF then has to go out and buy the stocks, right? That's how that's how all that works. And so it's important to understand uh, the money flow and how that works. So the key is to kind of doing this and becoming consistent. Again, this is just kind of a stepping back for those either newer, is that you want to have some setups that you feel comfortable with. You know, um, it's something where it's not like, let's just flip a coin, but it's something that's like, wow, I understand, you know, why it works. And then I know what it looks like on a chart when it sets up. That's what we want to know. But more importantly, okay, we want to know, you know, you got to know when to trade what I would call normally and conservatively. So what do I mean by that? So if you're, if you've got a hundred K account, you know, I'm going to risk, you know, 1% per trade, 1% of my equity per trade, but then sometimes everything comes together and it's like, well, geez, maybe I'm going to risk 5% on this one. Yeah. And you got to have a stop loss because, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to work. Right. But it's got a higher probability of working. So if you counted cards, you know, in Las Vegas and you had a high card count, it's like, you know what, let's bet a hundred dollars this time instead of 25, you know, that kind of thing. And it's up to you. Everybody's got their own risk controls and things like that too, but that's the kind of stuff that I like to do. But we've got to have setups that force patience because the urge and the intuition in trading is that if we have a big trade, we get excited. And even though it took a while for that trade to set up, we're like, oh my God, I got to do another one of those because the rush of making that big trade was so nice. Well, the reality of it is in the state of euphoria, you are apt to make the worst decisions of your life because you got this false sense of confidence. You know, no one can take you down. Yeah, the market can. So this forces patience because once you see how the setup is, you've got to be, you know, you've got to have all your ducks in a row before you're willing to do it again. And it's very, very clear what those ducks in a row are. So we want to know that. So, and I like options because that way you can kind of use some leverage in your account. Um, and we're not doing naked options like selling naked calls. Just, you know, you, you buy a call and you risk the debit paid, you know, if it's small, you position size correctly. And, uh, and, and so that's the idea. The kind of the idea is just like, you know, trading isn't gonna be completely stress-free, uh, but you shouldn't be biting your nails either. So why options? You know, the idea with options here is that, uh, you know, I like futures too, but with futures, you know, you can get in trouble if you have these huge overnight gaps against you and you don't have a stop in place and things like that, too. But, you know, if you buy one call for five dollars, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. If that goes to zero, you're losing five hundred dollars. You can't lose more than that. So that's what I kind of like. You know, I like about that. You know, you know exactly what the worst case scenario is. Um, and look, you, you don't have to trade huge. The funny thing is, is most traders I talk to when they trade too big, they're so nervous, they can't hold on to a trade anyway. So what happens? They end up taking small gains and big losses. That's called eating like a bird and defecating like an elephant and no account can sustain that over time. And so if you trade smaller, what happens is you get more consistent and then your equity curve looks better. So don't be afraid to trade small. Everybody kind of thinks that they should be trading bigger than they are. So that's what we're looking for, safety and leverage. And with the right option strategies and the right setups, um, there's never a risk of disaster. Okay. Now, when is there a risk of disaster? When you sell naked calls on SMCI at 400 and the stock opens up 100 points the next day, that's a disaster. When you're buying a call, okay, and it goes against you, the worst you can lose 
is the debit paid. And you can control that. You know exactly what that is. So that's what we're looking to do. Banks pay you interest now of 6% a year. And you can compound your gains at 6% a year. If you're trading consistently and stuff like that, you know, you're kind of looking at uh, accelerating that a little bit. Can we compound our gains at a couple percent a month, you know, at the very least? So that's what we're looking at or more. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do this real quick because I know nobody really cares about this. Let's get to the trading. But just to give you a little background for those of you that don't know who I am, um, I've been trading a long time, put on my first trade in the late 90s, uh, just as I got out of high school. I did do kind of the speaker that was in Prague. I said I was thirsty and someone got me a beer. That was great. Uh, did the TV circuit. You know, that was fun for a while. Um, man, you'd have to drag me there kicking and screaming now. I've met some of my heroes through this. I've done some oil research for Richard Branson and get to go out to Necker. We're going out to Necker Island in two weeks. Um, and that's kind of fun. Work on some stuff with charity with him. That's been a lot. Of, that's been a lot of fun. Um, but then at some point, you know, you have kids and a family and it's like it's more you realize it's way more important to spend time with them. Uh, do some mission and charity work. That's what I kind of like to use some of the trading gains for and stuff like that. And, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm a trader, you know, it's, uh, the money I make is from trading and I've got, you know, I've got, uh, I don't have a picture of it, but you know, I have a, a ranch in Texas. I've got like zebras on it. Uh, they need food. Um, so trading for me is a way to kind of pay for a dream and I want to make sure that I'm, you know, doing it and I like trading, you know, I think it's important to take time off, but ultimately this is something that I enjoy doing. Okay. Yeah. Young JC. Okay, yeah, and we're uh, Renee. We're going to actually talk about SMCI, so we'll absolutely talk about S SMCI. So let's talk about some of the key stuff here. And the question is, is you know, it's the chicken or the egg theory, right? And when you see a stock like Microsoft having a good day, is it because all of a sudden a bunch of funds woke up and said, you know what, we should buy Microsoft? Okay, and the answer to that is no. Okay, funds like to have a balanced exposure to the S&P 500. They're not going to put all their money in Microsoft. And so what they do instead is if they want more exposure to Microsoft, they're going to spread it around a little bit. They're going to buy XLK because remember, Microsoft makes up about, I forgot exactly, I think it's 23% of XLK. So if they put $100 million into XLK, guess what? They're going to get $23 million worth of Microsoft. So why is this important? Because what's more important than a squeeze on Microsoft is a squeeze on XLK. So when you see a weekly squeeze on something like XLK, that means there's going to be money coming into that entire sector, and it's going to you're going to see the outperformance of the biggest stocks because they are the most liquid, and that's why you see like Microsoft. That's why like most of the gains in the S and P's this year can be you know whittled down to about six stocks, right? That's uh, that's where all the value is coming from. And then when the sector runs out of juice, all the stocks kind of flail. We build up another squeeze and boom. OK, so it's important to understand. So goes the sector. So goes the stock. Not the other way around. OK, not the other way around. So so what does this mean? A couple of important things. So first of all, um, if there's no squeeze, you're just going to have pretty blah moves. Now we can see that Microsoft here. Uh, makes up 22.7% of this. Okay, that's a it, it averages 14 uh, to 15 million shares a day. This company has a market cap of three trillion. Okay, do you think if you and I are out there buying call options that that's going to move this stock? Absolutely not. Right. So we got to understand kind of what's moving it and stuff like that. Notice how Nvidia now is seven percent of this index. Um, that's and I did this screenshot yesterday, but I'm wondering if they got to update that at the end of the month. AVGO is also kind of coming up fast. CRM, I think that was down after hours today, but you can see that you know this drops down fast. Then you got a lot of one and two percenters, um, and you know, and they're not you're not trading a, a ton of volume or anything like that either. So, um, yeah, John, that's absolutely right. So John is just saying my nemesis: too many different positions, and when things go bad, it's tough to react. A absolutely. So, you know, I personally, instead of having twenty long positions. Would have rather have like three, you know, and maybe they're a little bit bigger than if I had 20. Uh, but then I can either A, quickly get out or, you know, buy some puts on, you know, QQQs just to kind of help hedge it out a little bit. Um, you know, in the last couple of days have been pretty choppy, right? So, so goes the sector. So goes the top stocks in the sector. Okay. Um, and that's, and it's really just the top one or two stocks. So you're really talking about, you know, Microsoft and Apple, um, you know, NVIDIA. 
uh, AVGO and XLK, uh, Meta and Google and XLC, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we like to watch these because they are really they really are moving things along. Stocks no longer move in a vacuum. The biggest, most consistent moves in stocks happen when their sector releases energy from a squeeze. And this is even better, kind of a bonus, when the main index, i.e. SPY or QQQ, is also in a squeeze. Um, it doesn't have to be, but when it is, those are the moments when you pounce. It's like, oh my gosh, it's all coming together. Um, normally, I'm risking 1%. I think this time I'll go maybe a little further out, 60 days out. Let's risk 5%. Let's watch that basket. Those are the opportunities that we live for as traders. So look at this. I want to show you this. This is super, super, super important. All right, here's Microsoft. So you'll notice here, Microsoft had this great squeeze in April. And, you know, it went from like 220, uh, I mean, up to 300. Okay, this is a weekly squeeze, by the way. And then I had another weekly squeeze and, you know, it went from about 360 up to 420. Okay, great moves. But I want you to notice that during the same time, XLK also had weekly squeezes. Okay, and the sector went up and the Qs also had weekly squeezes and they went up as well. This is what I'm talking about. When you get this, you know, the index, the sector within the index and then the, the biggest stock or you know, the biggest stock or one of the top three or four stocks in that sector of the squeeze, those are hands down by far going to be your biggest moves. And what's important to realize that you would think that it's like, oh, okay, well, that must happen every time, right? Every time there's a squeeze in Microsoft, it must mean that there's a squeeze in XLK and a squeeze in QQQ. Um, we're gonna go back to that slide. So here's a reality check. Now here's a daily chart. And you see like, oh my gosh, there's a squeeze in Microsoft, right? And what happens? It goes from 3.30 to like 3.36. Now the average squeeze lasts, you know, eight to 10 bars. And so it's kind of like, okay, it looks good. It looks good. And it just dies. And on something like this, you know, because I'm going to give it some room. I'm going to give it some room. And I wake up and it's just dead. This, this one didn't work. And uh, I remember this one. And then when I go back and I look at XLK, okay, there ain't no squeeze in XLK. I go back and look at the cues. There ain't no squeeze in the queue in the in the queues. And so what happened here is that, you know, you know, look, I love squeezes, but in the market that we're in, if we're trading one of the big boys, we've got to see the support of its sector, in this case, XLK. And it's a bonus. It doesn't have to be, but it's a bonus if the index itself, in this case, the queues also has a squeeze. That's when you're gonna get the biggest. Now, look, this worked. You know, if you bought it. Um, at 3.30 and you decided at, you know, 3.36, that was enough. You made money on it, but that's a lot. That fell apart pretty quickly, right? That's a lot different than kind of having a, some juice, uh, some juice that can get going. So, so the way I think about this, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I think, in, you know, we all come into trading. Oh my God, Siri's trying to talk to me. Siri, be quiet. Um, you know, we all come into trading for different reasons. And I think, you know, what is your dream in trading? And at the end of the day, I find that if I can trade well, I can meet my dreams. If I can't trade well, I will lose out of my dreams. And so this is really goes to show how important it is not to be right. Okay. I always say you can be right or you can make a return. You, it's hard to do both. You know, because if you want to make if you need if you want to make a monthly return because you got bills to pay and you're stubbornly holding out for, you know, three months for this trade to work out, that ain't in alignment, right? If you're trying to make a month a monthly return. So that's what I mean. So I've got to have setups that are aligned with that. And I've got to be patient and say no to a lot of things that are not aligned with that. And I've learned that a lot of times successful trading means that you can really recognize the trades that you're no longer taking. You know, yeah, of course, we're going to miss some trades. But a lot of the best trades are the ones that I passed on as well. And we're always going to miss trades. That's fine. But it's like, are we patient? And when things come together, is it working for us? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, would you rather be right or would you rather be rich? You know, would you rather be right? Would you rather be happy? You know, beat this whole idea of having to be right, man. It's a it's a virus. It's a virus. It's, humans like to be attached to a particular outcome. Detachment is kind of the, you know, superhero power. So a handful of well thought out, well planned trades can make your year. Not all squeezes are created equal, as we just saw. And it's important not to get excited and risk your funds on a mediocre squeeze. Okay. And of course we already saw that. So that's the mediocre squeeze doesn't have the support. So 
so now what it comes down to is, you know, when I first kind of thought about this, I was like, well, I want to be able to look at multiple sectors and indexes at the same time on multiple time frames to see if anything is setting up to squeeze together. And when a sector and an index and an individual stock are all squeezing together, big moves can and do happen. And big moves means, hey, guess what? My dreams of having zebras and traveling with my family and, you know, paying the mortgage, you know, those dreams can be fulfilled. Uh, but if I uh, don't follow this and I'm just kind of, you know, gunslinging it, um, you know, the dreams aren't going to be fulfilled. So it's really important is that, you know, I kind of joke in trading, you know, all you need are patience and the right tools. And the most important thing of these two is patience. You can have the right tools, but if you're impatient, it ain't going to work. Uh, if you're patient, but you don't have the right tools, you know, it can get a little iffy, but patience is so key. One of my mentors uh, said to me, you know, she was a broker, commodities broker for 12 years and went on her own. And she just watched a lot of clients. And she's like, John, you know, traders, traders are not born with the patience gene. You got to develop it. And if you don't, you will never make it. She was pretty harsh. So I asked Eric about this. You know, he spent some time on it. And if you guys are familiar with this, this is an older chart. This is called, you know, like a, this is the older version of this. But I remember this when, when Meta was Facebook and, you know, there was a squeeze in Facebook. I remember that the squeeze, because it's like, man, it didn't do anything. And then when I looked at the cues and the spiders and the sectors, you know, there was no juice. And I was like, oh my God, you know, we got to have support on this. And so I was like, hmm, now it's like, you know, we've done the squeeze pro. We might as well look at all this with the squeeze pro. Um, and if you're not familiar with the squeeze or squeeze pro, you know, basically it's kind of what it does is just, it kind of measures, you know, the Bollinger bands. And when they contract, uh, inside of the Keltner channels, that just means that it's a squeeze of volatility, and then it's going to release that volatility. Okay, and that's that's what a squeeze is, and so it's just a tool to kind of help identify that in a very clean and clear manner. So the squeeze represents a compression of volatility, and shows us the 20% of the time when a stock has a highest probability of having a greater than expected move. Okay, you guys have all heard the stats, right? 70% of the time markets are going to stay within their expected move. What does that mean? That means that the market makers are kind of controlling the market. If the expected move in Home Depot is $4 for the week, guess what? You know, on Monday and you get to Friday's close, you are 70% of the time going to be within that $4 range. Why? Because the market makers are selling options based on that math and they like to make money. So they can kind of move things around. About 20, that implies 30% of the time that there's a greater than expected move. But I've really found is that 20% of the time when there's a squeeze, the odds of a greater than expected move are increased exponentially. Okay, that is the time. And it, what's great about that is that when there's a squeeze, the market is naturally quiet. Guess what? When the market is naturally quiet, that's when you want to buy calls. You don't want to buy calls on coin when it's $210 and it's already you know went up 50% over the last week. You want to buy it when it's calm and quiet and in a squeeze is when you want to buy it. Okay, so that's great because then the IV is lower, you're buying options at a fair price. And then when the price in this case goes up, uh, there are squeezes that set up to the short side too. Not only are you having an increase in intrinsic value, but you're also having IV expansion. So it's the best of both worlds. Um, you don't even have to know how options work and you're automatically getting in at the right time. And then when you're getting out, not only is intrinsic value getting better in your option, but um, implied volatility is expanding, which is great. So so that's what we're looking for. I mean, basically, yeah, you can you can you can scratch out a nice living. I'm not mocking this at all because I, I believe in it too. Like, if there's nothing going on, sell some put credit spreads, right? Within expected moves, you're selling five dollars wide, buck fifty, collecting some premium. You can make a living doing that. And what I'm looking for, though, if I'm going to buy a call, okay, I'm never going to buy a call if there's not a squeeze because the market is locked into an expected move. And who wants? to waste their time and money on that. Okay, so what does this look like? So now here's Microsoft. This is what it looks like right now. And you'll notice that there is a squeeze back here. And this is a daily chart, by the way. And on this daily chart, I'm also, I'm also looking at any squeezes that are setting up on the spiders, the Qs, IWM, the Dow, because Microsoft is part of the Dow. It's not part of the IWM, obviously, but I want to know what IWM is doing. Um, so what I've done is circle the sectors that impact Microsoft. So the Dow, uh, XLK, and then of course, um, the MAG7, which is kind of this new sector that I like to keep an eye on. So now when I see the squeeze, it's like, wow, we got a squeeze on the SPY. Uh, we got a squeeze on the Qs, okay? IWM doesn't matter. Um, 
but there's a squeeze on the Dow that does matter. Okay. XLK that absolutely matters. Uh, Mag seven. Yeah. That, no, that's not, that's a, oh, that's a, yeah, sorry. That's XLF. That doesn't matter. XLK doesn't matter. Mag seven wasn't around here. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So great. When you got all that juice and now here's Microsoft, good old boring Microsoft. And what this is, is just, uh, Keltner channels at the 3.0 setting. Cause typically from the 21 EMA, once you get about to 3.0, that's typically about it. But guess what? As long as the squeeze momentum is going, it can ride that 3HR level. And then at some point when you start to lose momentum, that's when you kind of go back to the mean, which is now risen in this case about 50, you know, 40 points. And then it builds up a new squeeze. And then you look to see like, okay, here's the squeeze, right? And there's really nothing happening. Nobody else is kind of playing along. So you're just kind of waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, now we're getting some action from everybody else. And then finally we get a move to 3ATR, okay? So there's one setting up right now. At this point, I'm presuming that this will release to the upside. Obviously, um, you know, we all know that the markets are kind of high here, but we got we got some inflation numbers in the morning. Maybe they're enough to kind of get this party started again. The point is, um, you know, when do you get into Microsoft when there's a squeeze? Well, if there's a squeeze in Microsoft, but there ain't no squeezes in all the other sectors, it's a no-go. Okay, you wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay, now we got support. Now let's get in. And this way it's nice too, because you're not, you know, sitting there, you know, sucking your thumb for weeks while waiting for something to happen, which can also be frustrating. So all this kind of coming together is nice and it makes it, you know, pretty nice and clean and, and, and easy to do. Um, so now here's a 30 minute chart. Okay. We were just looking at a daily chart. Now this is a trade I'm in right now, meta and, you know, meta here is, hasn't been doing a lot and it's, you know, just kind of watching it and, and, you know, we're kind of humming along here. You can see the last 30 minute squeeze here really took off when what, you know, we had all the backing here and popped. Um, right now we do have squeezes in SPY on the 30 minute chart in QQQ, uh, in XLK and XLC uh, and the MAG7. OK, these are all critical support for Meta. Now, um, Meta has kind of been farting around here a little bit. And of course, I think everybody's also waiting for the numbers. But if this thing can get going, then what I would look for is to see if Meta can kind of start working its way up to 500. You know, can it do that? Now, this is the 30 minute chart. So these, these lines aren't as critical. Um, I look at them more on the daily. And so we can look at that. So, so that's on the 30 minute chart. And so if I'm doing a 30 minute you know, squeeze, I also want to make sure that there is support. Uh, behind it, right? Now here's NVIDIA, kind of the same idea. You know, if you get a squeeze, you know, setting up on NVIDIA, you know, right here, we don't have XLK, we don't have SMH, you know, we don't have all the support. And then we start getting all the support for NVIDIA and it's like, okay, baby, let's go. And in this case, it was a nice run from, uh, you know, the nice like 20 point run. Again, remember, this is a 30 minute squeeze, this is a trade run for like two days and we're done. So it's it's the patience part comes from waiting just to make sure like, okay, we got some dots here, but where where's everybody else? We want everybody to join the party, okay? We want all the pertinent parties involved in this trade. And so this is a way to kind of wait and be patient. And, you know, not, what's the worst is like, you know, it's, you think this is gonna go and it's Tuesday and you buy calls for Friday, right? And it does nothing and that can be very frustrating. Of course we can sell put credit spreads, but what we wanna do is we wanna participate in this. And what I have found is it's really not gonna happen until we get support, okay? Teamwork, teamwork to make the dream work. So, so what happened, if you're familiar with our rooms, uh, you know, these are posted in the room, like, hey, in this case, it was a vertical, um, you know, with all that kind of stuff. And, and you can see that, you know, entry on the 26th out on the 30th. And so that's just kind of, you know, if you're not familiar with our trading room, that's how we do it. Now, here's another thing that I like to do. Yeah, this is on all, so, so whatever time frame is here, this is think or swim. So if this is a 30 minute, if I'm looking at the cues on the 30 minute, then all of these are going to drop down to the 30 minute as well. If I change this to the daily, then all these are going to be the daily. If I look at this on the weekly, all these are going to be on the weekly. And we can look at some live charts here. Um, okay, so, so here's the cues. Now, one of the things I like to do is I do like to do trades on the indexes. And if I'm going to do a directional trade on the indexes, 
So in this case, I'm looking at the cues. Who do I want behind it? Okay, so here's the squeeze, right? We're doing nothing, we're doing nothing, we're doing nothing, and then we go. Okay, well, what happens? We get participation from the SPY, from XLK, from Microsoft, right? From Meta, from Apple, from Amazon, from Google, uh, from NVIDIA, from Tesla. So, you know, so here I got SPY, XLK, XLC, and the MAG7. So if you're gonna be trading the Qs or NASDAQ futures or anything like that, you know, really you gotta know what these are doing because that's, I mean, those, I don't know what percent those seven stocks make up of the NASDAQ, but it's like half, if not more. So the Qs are nice because obviously they're liquid, um, you know, all the things. And so it's a nice way to kind of play all of it, but guess what, you know, these Q squeezes work best when everyone else is also lining up like that, right? Here's the squeeze, everybody's lined up, let's go party. So right now there's been a big squeeze, we're all in squeezes and of course everybody is waiting for the numbers in the morning. So tomorrow morning, um, you know, we could go down in the morning, but you know, we'll see. I mean, obviously the trend is up and we'll see if the market continues on its trek higher for tomorrow. So, yeah, so Dale, good question. Um, are we waiting until the squeeze red dots end to buy the call or put? You can. Um, now, sometimes though, what I like to do, especially if, you know, you can see here, here's where the day ended. The next day we just ripped. What I like to do is when I see five red dots in this case, I like to look down and say, do we have support? If we do, I'll get in. In this case, there were five dots and I look down and there's not enough support. So then I just keep waiting. And once I see some support, and like the momentum change, then I like to kind of get in. So I do like to get in early. And sometimes, you know, that means you're kind of kind of waiting. Um, so, you know, it just kind of depends what you're comfortable with there. What I like about options, though, is you can actually, you know, a lot of times people don't put on trades because they're scared, right? It's the fear of the unknown. And a little trick with that is instead of focusing on the fear of the unknown, just focus on the risk of the unknown, okay? You don't know what's going to happen. So put on a trade where the max risk is something you can live with. And maybe it's a butterfly, you know, maybe it's a cheap out of the money debit spread until you get a little bit more confirmation. So it's just kind of a little mental trick to kind of get over that. Um, so great. So now, so that's one thing I wanted to cover. So that's, uh, we call that the triple squeeze pro really what it is, is like the quintuple squeeze pro, because we're able to look at all these things and get support. We'll talk, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but I wanted to talk about another phenomena. Okay. That's happening in this market. You've probably seen it with Bitcoin. You've probably seen it with AVGO, you've probably seen it with SMCI, because you are seeing these crazy moves that seem like they happen kind of out of the blue, right? It's like, okay, well, those wasn't necessarily squeezes on that. Sometimes there are, but it's like, good Lord, what is, what is driving these stocks up 100, 200 points at a time? It's insane. And and what happens here is that you do have money that goes into the indexes, kind of, kind of in, a call, in a calm fashion, but then you have the machines, you have the algos. And one of the black, spot, black box systems a lot of these guys use, uh, I talk to them all the time, is it's called channel convergence, okay? We know this as momentum, but they've got to have a trigger, okay? At, at some point, what triggers them to dive in and create this momentum, okay? And what happens is it's called channel convergence. If you guys have heard of the turtle traders, they, did, they were always big into 21 bar high and low. That's something that's carried on to this day. Everybody uses it a little bit differently now, um, but that'll be the basis of some of this, okay? And so this is kind of what happens. And this is an older chart, but you know, you'll get like flop, 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 crazy move. Oh my God, let's go back down. We stop magically, flop, you know, and that's, that's kind of what, and I think we're gonna see a lot more of that this year. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this now as well. Um, you know, the trend is the trend up right now is great, but we also wanna know what's gonna happen if, you know, if things get a little, a little volatile. So obviously I love squeezes, gonna be using squeezes all the time. And anytime I see a squeeze that has all the support of the sectors or anything like that, I'm gonna take it. Now there'll be so many time though, especially in some of our favorite stocks where it's like, man, this thing has taken off and there really wasn't a squeeze. What is going on? And that's what the machines and algos are stepping in. So what we wanna know is visually is we wanna be able to see when the machines and algos and all this automated stuff, this non-human stuff, is pouring into a stock. So this is the stuff that can cause gamma squeezes and all that kind of fun stuff. So here's SMCI. This is a daily chart. And you're gonna notice here that there's two lines, okay? So the purple line, 
this is the yearly high and low. Okay, and it's up and it changes, right? So here was the high right here. And of course, you know, as it as the stock rallies, and then you can see right now that the, the yearly high, of course, this is a little bit older, was right here. Okay, the yellow one, this is the 21 day. So what happens here is what we're looking for is that when the 21 converges with the yearly, that typically kicks off some momentum. And then anytime it comes down, support is in the form of the rising 21 period uh, the 21 bar low. All right, so here we push to new highs. It comes back to the rising 20 bar, 21 bar low. Here we push to new highs. It comes back to the rising 21 bar low. And then in some points, and whether it's earnings or something like that, when they converge, the, it can just keep ripping as long as the volume is there to support it. And guess what? When it comes down, it comes down to what? The rising 21 bar low, and then it rips again. Okay. What's nice about this tool is that it tells us that, you know, the current convergence, uh, it lasted 33 days. The average convergence lasts 41 days for this particular stock. So we can see, you know, kind of how that works. Now, we all, so I, I deliberately cut this off here because guess what? So here you can see that, okay, now the 21 bar high is coming down. Guess what? Support is kind of the 21 bar low. It doesn't really change every time we come down to the 21 bar low. 21 bar low starts to rise. The 21 bar high converges back with the yearly high. And then what happens? Well, you can see that this is 350. So we all know what happens next. Boom. Insane, insane move. And so in this case, this when this converged, um, this was just this incredible move. And what's interesting right now is that there's really no support until 500. OK, this is rising every day and it's very possible that this comes all the way down to this rising 21 bar low before it does what converges again. This is one of the most extreme examples I've seen. So I just wanted to show that just to kind of show the, uh, you know, kind of how crazy that is. But the main thing is, is that when these things converge, that's what turns up the black boxes. And that's when you start to get the volume and, and things like that. So. Um, so let's look at, so here's the trade I'm in right now, Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs, um, you know, not too long ago, you know, it's, it's kind of got a narrow channel here and not too long ago was at its low, yearly low. And then you can see that the 21 bar high started to rise as did the 21 bar low. Uh, we met the yearly highs and we got a convergence. And now you can see when it falls, it, it finds support at the 21 bar low. And what I'm looking for is can... Um, you know, is this convergence going to push us up through 400? So not a super exciting trade because it's Goldman Sachs, right? There's obviously some squeezes on this too, um, but that convergence got me interested um, just to see if that's something that can get going. And then uh, here's Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, the average convergence, and again, remember, this is kind of when it kicks off the machines. So when the 21 day converged with the high, OK, and remember that. And then prior to that, it was acting as support. Then it kicks off the new kind of momentum path. And in this case, the average convergence is 55 days. So far, it's gone 87 days. So it's pretty crazy. You can see when it came down, it basically came down to what? The trailing 21 bar, you know, it kind of flooded around there a little bit. It came back. Um, you know, into the convergence, you know, when it comes back and kind of test that convergence, then you get the next leg higher. So what's nice about something like Bitcoin you know, in Bitcoin, if we're looking at squeezes, we don't really have like, you know, three or four other things that we can look at for a squeeze in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, just as gold is gold. Gold and the gold miners move differently because sometimes hedge funds will short gold miners and buy gold. You know, so that's that's why they move differently. Um, but I like about this is it really gives us kind of a heads up on any momentum there. And then, of course, you know, we could use that to trade MSTR or coin and, and we can look at some of those. Um, We'll look at some of those here shortly. So you can also use this intraday. So here is, here's coin. Now on this, you have three channels. So it's a 10 minute chart. So this is the 10 minute channel. And of course, as you can imagine, it's intraday. So it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of all over the place. So it does offer some support, but it's, it's frankly weak. But what I'm looking for here is when the uh, 10 minute 21 bar intersects with the 21 day. And then, of course, when it hits the the yearly, that's when things can really go crazy. And so you, you can see here it came crazy. And then we kind of bounced around in the 10 minute 21 bar channel. And then we got the volume again and we 
converged with the 21, which converged with the yearly. And then since then, it's just been off and running. So, and that's what I mean like that. And it just means that when you have convergence like that, um, black boxes get triggered, momentum ensues, volume pours in. And a lot of times as retail traders, we're like, well, what happened? What's the news? And sometimes there's news, but sometimes the black spot, the black boxes like that stuff and they're just trading it and it can keep going until it fizzles. And, um, you know, and right now we'll kind of, and obviously there's some big numbers tomorrow. And we'll kind of see how that plays out. So the key here is to know when there is convergence with these levels and when volume gets thrown into the mix, it is even more powerful. And yes, sometimes the triple squeeze pro will push a stock into a 21 bar yearly convergence trade. And those are a lot of fun. So, um, so here's a couple of trade examples. These are ones that we did in the room. So here's SMCI. Back when it was this paltry little stock of $500, you know, we had a 30 minute squeeze and we're waiting, waiting, great, here's support. Now SMCI isn't really a major part of this stuff, right? But when you've got a stock that's kind of, you know, on fire like that, it generally tends to move when, you know, the key stocks and the key sectors also move. So that's another thing that's interesting. So SMCI, you know, it is not, you know, certainly not an integral part of these, um, but it's 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 a player, right? And so, and so here we got the squeeze, boom, boom, boom. In this case, target was 600, and we hit it. And then there was another one. Great, we got support. Everybody else is also squeezing. So the high flyers actually tend to get some juice when uh, you know when there's when that stuff is happening as well. And then if we if we bring SMCI down and we look at convergence, okay, this is during that same time, we can see that's like, oh wow, you know, here's the 21 bar on the 10 minute. When it hits the 21 bar daily, what happens? Boom, volume pours in. This is the indication that all the algos and stuff like that are going crazy. And in this case, we walk up from 500 to 600 in four days. Okay. So that's that's what's kind of fun is that when you see this stuff and you just know that man that's going to hit this and that's going to bring in even more uh, volume and you can actually see it coming in like that. So yeah, and so these what these do this is just another way to measure volume. Uh, this is something that'll come with the layup tools. It's um, so this will show that you know this is where uh, normal volume is this time of day for the stock and where volume is right now. Because usually you know, by the end of the day, you'll know if it's higher than average volume. Uh, but what's nice about this, it just kind of shows you like, hey, normally this time of day, volume's right here. And guess what? It's right here. It just means that there's a lot. So like today, volume on us, it was it was 63% below normal. Um, and that's SMCI. And so same thing, you know, in our trading room, it's like, okay, yeah, we found this one. Um, you know, we're buying this. Uh, at nine dollars and eighty-seven cents, and selling it at thirty-two fifty. Right? You can you can make a living doing that. Um, okay, AVGO is another one. So here's AVGO. As we know, it's the number four stock in what XLK. So we got a squeeze on AVGO, and it's like, wow, we got a squeeze on the Qs. We got a squeeze on XLK. Um, you know, and some of the Mag Sevens, and then boom, this thing just took off, and and that was a fun trade as well. And, you know, again, if it doesn't have the backing of it, you know, here's a squeeze and it's like, eh, it's a lot of green dots, not a lot of support. It kind of fizzles. So we kind of, I like to see that support. So same thing here on AVGO. Um, if we're looking at the layups, it's like, man, we converged here. And, and of course, since this is the daily, it kind of resets every day, right? It converged and just took off. Um, and then you can see that the volume poured in and then we kind of traded sideways. And this is where we got in on that squeeze boom, we converged and took off. And so it's just kind of a nice to see because we can kind of visually see like, oh, great, this should kick off some momentum as the black box systems and the algos come in. And, you know, and obviously you're not looking at 100 stocks like this. You've got your mag seven and a couple more that you like, and you can just kind of keep an eye on them and, and see when those come together. Um, is this different than the sandbox and the quick hits? Yes. So the sandbox and quick hits, uh, that's for the indexes. It measures essentially those those moves um where they get faded and then you know we're using those multiple time frames to kind of catch the rotation so the quick hits is kind of a it's a way to fade a move it's like okay it's kind of, you know it's rallied into the quant pivot let's you know sell some call credit spreads for it to come down whether this is looking for momentum like we're looking for the explosions you know up and you know and the pukes down 
Uh, and then same thing here. This was um, we bought AVGO and uh, we bought it at 340. It was only ten dollars wide. Our target was seven, and you know it hit it, and it was great because I was I was traveling, and then Heather was 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 great because she went in there and said, hey, it, you know, Carter's trade hit. Get out if you're not out already. And because sometimes I'll place a target. And then it'll hit, and then I'll come back, and you know it's come back down, and someone's like, "Well, what are you going to do with AVGO?" I'm like, "It hit the target, so you got to make sure that you know we're, we're posting those exits as well." Um, so, so the excitement about this is that with this tool, you know, I can still I can look up up to ten indexes and sectors of my choice as I'm moving through my stocks on any time frame, and quickly see where the focused action is going to take place next. And in addition, I can kind of quickly see if the algos are going to get triggered and jump in on this play as well, because if they are, I know that there could be kind of a you know got to strap in because it's going to be kind of a little bit of a bucking bronco. So the idea with this, and I always like to, you know, semi joke and say, you know, what, you know, what's your main goal as a trader? And, you know, and it's not to be right, and it's not to, you know, call the top or call the bottom. It's essentially, you know, to start an account on January first, and then, you know, by the time the end of the year comes along, you know, equity curve is higher, and that's it. And you know, the more you can be patient, the more you have setups uh, that you learn to to wait for. Uh, the more smooth your equity curve is going to be. You know, it doesn't have to be this gyration where you're having to pop shots of Pepto Bismol, you know, while you're trading during the day. That's an indication that you should probably just, you know, take a step back and be a little bit more patient. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and look at some charts. If there's some charts that you guys want to look at, I'll let's do it live. Um, for those of you that have never seen this stuff, I just want to show you that we're going to do a, a little bit of a workshop on this and some live trading. So there's a basic workshop on this, and this basic workshop is going to include uh, kind of an updated discussion, um, the Triple Squeeze Pro indicator that we talked about, and of course, the uh, a recording of the original Triple Squeeze class that I did, and then the workshop will include some updated stuff. Uh, and then the Elite is going to include all of this, as well as the layup indicator. So that's the one that's the ch channels converging and all that kind of fun stuff. We'll have a pre-recorded layup class and then some updated examples there. And then we're going to do two days of live trading. Um, and this will be, the workshop will be on March 9th. And then we'll give it a couple of weeks, get everybody some time to kind of test drive all this stuff. And then uh, we'll do a couple of days of live trading together. So while you're ruminating on that, uh, we'll come back to that. Um, I did want to kind of go through... And look at you know, I was watching Bitcoin overnight to see what was going on there. So you know we're watching Bitcoin. So of course so goes Bitcoin. You know so goes Coin. It'll be interesting to see where those go. Um, and then some of the other ones that I was looking at here on the daily is we talked about Microsoft, right? So Microsoft, uh, you have a lot of stuff like there that's setting up. Uh, one I was watching. It's not quite as sexy, but Bank of America. Um, you don't have the spies here, but you know you got the Dow, you got you know financials and stuff like that too. But basically, any stock that I want to look at, I want to kind of run through this and get a sense of what's going on. You know, I talked about Goldman Sachs. Uh, this is a stock that I have. It had a decent day today. It's just been kind of you can see here it's been flopping around. But good look, there's a squeeze. Um, you know, we got we got financials and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And if I if I bring this down a little bit, you can see that three ATR target. That's that's a 408. So that's kind of my target on that. But mostly I've got a put credit spread on it at three, you know, the 395. So I'd like to see it at least, you know, push a little bit higher into 400. Is there any other stocks you guys want me to look at? Uh, Apple. So Apple is a little bit of a dud here, right? Now we know that XLK has a squeeze. Uh, we know that the Qs have a squeeze, but the Apple squeeze right now is losing momentum. So it's just kind of, you know, so what we're looking for. So for a bullish squeeze, if we're going to see a squeeze that fires long, what we want to see is that this momentum is typically above zero. So you can see here's a squeeze. Momentum was below zero. It dropped. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for a squeeze to the upside, typically, uh, yeah, like you can see, here's a squeeze upside because the momentum is to the upside, right? Squeeze, all that kind of stuff. So Apple right now is, you know, a little bit of. So my rule of thumb is that, you know, if the if the stock is trading below the 21 EMA, I'm generally not too excited about the long side. You know, my it just kind of, you know, the train tracks right now are pointed lower. 
Um, what I want to see is that the train tracks are kind of pointed higher. And then if we can get a squeeze on a pullback to the 21 EMA, then awesome. Then I'll catch and you know catch up another move to the top of that. So that's kind of the, the general idea. And then if we look at the intraday, oh, that's the daily channel. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's look at what Apple looks like on this. So Apple, you can see, guess what? Let me get rid of these lines on here. Uh, da, 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 clear drawing set. So we can just kind of see the channels and look what's happening here. I mean, this is why this is kind of this hidden support level in the markets. So you had the 21 bar and, you know, they kind of converged and now it's kind of flopping around. But you can see here at like, you know, so we stopped at the 21 bar low where we rallied to the falling 21 bar high. We came all the way down to the 21 bar low and now we're just kind of, you know, we're just kind of hanging out here. So there's definitely support here, but, you know, this is not, it's, it's, it's just kind of hanging out, you know, and they, I know they recently canceled their, uh, their car thing and all that kind of stuff too. But you can see when we're trending and we converge, that's when we get the best moves. In this case, that was a nice $20 move and a really, really, and a really, really big stop. So that's kind of fun there. And then, yeah, we looked at AVGO. I mean, that one looked interesting. If we look at coin right now, we can see, of course, that, you know, coins already fired a squeeze. So that one's off and running. Um, uh, another one that had come up, uh, some, somebody asked me about Peloton today. You know, it doesn't matter. Obviously, it doesn't matter what these are doing. Peloton's not going anywhere. So you got to so make sure when you're looking at a stock. So the whole point of this is that you want to look at a stock that is what? part of these sectors. And so if you don't know, you can go to, I can put this link in here, sector spiders, you come in here, you know, you click on it and say, okay, great. Just look at the top four or five, Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, AVGO. Got it. Okay. So what else do we want to look at? Uh, XLC. Okay. What are, what are we going to do in there? Oh, Meta, there's Google, there's Netflix. Okay. Maybe some of these, but you know, these are kind of small. Remember the most money is going to go into the heaviest weighted stocks. And so that's kind of a way to really narrow down. Now, am I going to get excited about an SMCI? Of course, right? I'm gonna. There are going to be some stocks out there, but in general, if there's not what I call a stock of the day, or if Bitcoin's not doing anything or anything like that, um, these I'm always checking these. You know, if I'm doing something in financials, then you know I'm looking at J.P. Morgan, maybe Visa and Mastercard, uh, Goldman Sachs. You know, it's, it's a smaller percentage, but it, it likes to move. Uh, not nearly as fun, of course. So anyway, but that's what I'm looking at there. And so when people ask me about Peloton, like, look, save your money. You know, it's and it's easy to kind of romanticize. Oh, my God, it's a four dollar stock. You know, is it going to go back to 200? No. I mean, you know, heads a heads up. It's not. So this is what I mean by, you know, you don't want to piss away your chips. You know, a lot of times in trading, you got to learn how to sit on your hands and not. Uh, they say in Eng jolly old England, piddle away your chips. And in America, that's called piss away your capital. But a lot of times what happens in trading is that, you know, traders get bored. They 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 screw around. They lose some money. And then finally, a good setup comes along. And now they they make back the money that they lost. Right. That's not the, the goal is to have an equity curve that keeps going up. Right. And so don't piddle away your chips on, on crap. So that's a way to kind of if you're not really sure, you know, stick to those stick to the 10 stocks that are kind of the biggest stocks in those sectors and you'll be in you'll be in good hands and that's that's a huge 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 important thing okay so so this is kind of what we're doing the nice thing about this is that you get the triple squeeze pro indicator with the basic workshop with the elite you know you obviously get this but you also get that layup indicator that's the convergence that where all the algos and stuff like that are coming in and we want to know uh, that's almost spelled right so, and then we're going to be doing live trading on both of those. Okay. And again, this workshop will be on the ninth and we do have some pre-recorded classes from the prior versions of these, like from five or six years ago. Uh, now we've updated them and they are raring to go uh, for this market, which is pretty awesome. So, um, so the interactive session, which will be on March 9th, it'll just be kind of an update. Like, Hey, here's, here are the exact stocks that I'm looking at. Uh, here's some stuff that's setting up. Make sure you have any questions about what's going on. And then that'll get us prepped for our live trading sessions for those of you that'll be doing it, which we'll do a couple weeks after the class. Because I always like to give people some time to kind of hang out with the tools and stuff like that too. And we'll go through, of course, and answer questions and things like that too. And hopefully if you're interested, there's a link because of course, typing this in, um, you would need a magnifying glass and steady hands because uh, that's a very long link. So hopefully you have a link that you can just click and, and you're able to kind of get that. And then the layup tool, like I said, this is the convergence one. And this is the one that's kind of like, remember, 
when you see that channel tag the next the, the next higher one up, that is a signal for the algos to turn on. And I love to get into that. And then when it when it hits that, man, you just kind of, you know, it's kind of like turning on the gas. But remember, you're not doing this on Peloton, right? Nothing's going to save Peloton. You're doing this on those top 10 stocks. And then, uh, you know, again, AVGO, that's one of the top four stocks. And then we're going to find some unique situations, you know, like with uh, Bitcoin and, and stuff like that. So MSTRs and all that. Um, but this narrows your world of stocks down to like less than 20. You know, you don't need... Uh, you don't need to trade everything. Just like, you know, at a mentor of mine, Dan Sullivan, he's like, you know, a lot, he's like, you never see a surfer who's out there catching the waves, come in on shore, all depressed. And you're like, hey, man, what's how is surfing? He's like, uh, I wasn't able to touch all the water, man. You know, that's not how it works. When you catch a wave, it's amazing and you feel great. And it's the same thing in trading. You're not going to catch all the moves. But if you're patient, you can catch the moves um, you, you can catch the moves that'll have an impact on, you know, on your account and your life and all that kind of fun stuff. So, okay, we've got that. So we'll do the live trading back to back on March 26th and 27th. Um, we do this all day. Now it doesn't mean I'm on the mic all day, you know, I'll kind of stop. I'll, I'll be on the mic in the morning. I think Henry might jump on and help out and then we'll all kind of hang out together. And as trades set up, we'll post them. We'll have discussions, you know, typing and stuff like that. Um, and just kind of, so we can kind of see this stuff. It's it's one thing to look at a PowerPoint. You know, everything on a PowerPoint looks great, but it's like, what's happening in real life? What's happening in real time? How are you going to react when that comes up? What option should you buy? How far out? You know, all those fun things. So so that'll be fun. And then if uh, we do have this deal with PayPal, if you're looking at this going like, God, that's great, but man, my credit card, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, you can go six months, zero interest, no payments. And at the end of six months, uh, you know, you can start making payments and they'll start doing interest. But, you know, we've talked to people where they'll do it. You know, they learn um, and they can have some trades to make enough trading to pay it off. Obviously, there's no guarantee that can happen. It happens. We've heard of people doing it. Um, but every, you know, everyone's a little unique like that. I always like to say, like, look, this, you know, what, what, this is stuff that works for me. Uh, if you have the right, you know, if you have the temperament and you know how to position size and you learn, you know, you learn how to control yourself emotionally and stuff like that, then the possibility is there and everyone's a little different like that. Um, okay. So here's all, so here's the page. Happy to answer questions. Um, let me get this out to, da, 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 da. All right, so, okay. Um, would it be prudent to use the squeeze pro? Oh yeah. So great question. So the other thing you can do on this is let me find it. Uh, yeah. So just change this to monthly. Okay. Cause this is where, you know, the big Mamba Jambas are happening, right? So, you know, if we look at, uh, what's, what's a, I mean, Amazon fired its monthly squeeze, but when you look at this, so monthly squeezes, okay. So look, here's here's a a year and a half where there's no squeezes, and we kind of drifted up and stuff like that too. But what happens is when a lot of squeezes come together on the monthly chart, it releases a lot of energy. Okay, that happened to be Amazon, and so I always want to know that. So you got a monthly squeeze here on Amazon. Now remember, a monthly squeeze only happens every three to five years. When there's a monthly squeeze and this happens, okay, again, it's only three to five years. Guess what you're doing? You are taking advantage of that because that's when the biggest trades happen. All right. Now, right now we've had, you know, the spiders, they've already fired. The Q's already fired. There's one on IWM. You know, the Dow's already fired. Uh, XLK is already fired. So, you know, we're kind of at a point where, you know, the squeeze has fired on the monthly charts and it'll be a little time before it gets again. Um, but it's so important because this is, that's the time when you're going to make the, you know, look, you don't have to buy a call eight months out, but just know when the monthly squeeze fires, the wind's at your back, you buy every dip till that squeeze runs out. Right. And so that's, that's a great way to do it. Uh, if you want to look at the weekly squeezes, you know, just change this to weekly, see what's happening right now. And you can see a lot of weekly squeezes have already fired. You know, this is Amazon it already fired. It's off and running. Uh, so there's a lot of, you know, from a weekly perspective, the, the big moves kind of there, right? So that's why we're kind of looking at some of the 30 minute charts now and what's happening. Um, but I, I am uh, looking for, you know, some of this general momentum to possibly pause for a little bit. And that's why, you know, we want to have things like these tools for shorter term trades, like the 30 minute chart. 
Um, those convergences also work to the downside. You know, when the when the 21 day and the yearly come together, the downside it also works like that too. So so there's you know that kind of a market. You just you just want to be able to have the flexibility to do that, but also understand that you know when these monthly squeezes happen, and that's that's kind of a it's not necessarily a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it's a it's a once in every three to four years opportunity. You want to be aware of it. You want to take advantage of it. And I know people who wait for those, you know, they trade it for seven or eight months and then, you know, they take some time off because that's that's a focused time to be doing that. Um, OK, if contract prices are higher than what I'm willing to put in a trade, how should I handle it? OK, so that's a good question. Like SMCI is insane, right? So if you want to buy, you know, like an at the money call on SMCI, it's like $50, you know, if it's for next week. And that's obviously a lot. So you can turn anything you want into a call debit spread. So, you know, if the at the money is $50 and then, um, so I'm just going to make up. So if the 800 is $50 uh, and the 825, okay, might be, um, you know, $40, whatever, whatever it is. Well, you buy the 500, you sell as a call debit spread, and now it's a $10 option. It's a $10 option where your max upside is going to be 25. Okay. And you can, you know, reduce that. So you can, you can trade a, a $5,000 stock and turn it into a $3 debit. So that's what's kind of nice about call debit spreads like that. And that's, that's typically the way around it. Um, can you explain about implied volatility? Well, so implied volatility. So the nice thing about this, again, if you're an option trader, and you understand implied volatility. Obviously, that's a great tool. What's nice about this is when all those squeezes are happening, what's happening is implied volatility is dropping. Why? Because things are quiet. So when you're buying while there are squeezes, you know, it, you say that, you know, normally implied vol is like 43 percent, you know, on a stock, you know, when it's moving. And then when it quiets down, it may drop to like, you know, 36%, whatever it is. You're buying the options at a little bit cheaper price. And then when it pops and goes again, the, the IV will expand. So that's how I'm using it. Now, there's different ways to use it if you want to sell premium and stuff like that too. But the nice thing here is that when there's a squeeze, the implied volatility naturally drops because it's quiet. And so when you're, you know, of course, in your, if you're talking about options and if you've traded options for any length of time, it's like, oh my God, you got to sell premium. And, and, and I like selling premium. Um, but in this case, if I see those, because I know this is 20% of the time when we're going to have a greater than expected move, right? I want to buy calls. The worst thing is, you know, you sell a $5, it's not the worst thing, but it's close. You sell a $5 put credit spread for $1.50, right, on SMCI, and then it goes up $100. Okay, congratulations, you made $1.50. Had you bought a call or bought an out of the money call debit spread, right, you would have made a lot more. So, so the idea... Um, the idea with the, with the squeeze is you want to have exposure to a greater to the possibility of a greater than expected move. Now, one thing I like to do is for every one call I buy, okay, I'll typically sell three put credit spreads. And then, of course, uh, what happens then is that the premium decay from the put credit spread pays for any decay I'm losing in the call while I'm waiting for it to go. So that's one, you know, a couple different ways to skin the cat, so to speak. Um. Uh, how do you know if the squeeze is short or long? So that's just the momentum on the squeeze, which we talked about. And so, you know, if there's a squeeze and momentum's above zero, you're looking for it to go higher. If there's a squeeze and momentum's below zero, you're looking for it to release energy to the downside. Um, have you tried it with the quick hits? Well, it's a good question. I've looked, so I've kind of, you know, I, I, I've put it on with the quick hits, but it's, it's you get a, it gets pretty busy. So what I'll typically will do is I'll look at two charts. So I might have quick hits, you know, right here, and then I can have, you know, the 30 minute triple squeeze here and look at them together. And, you know, they all, they do kind of complement each other a little bit different uh, in terms of, um, what am I trying to say? You know, in terms of like what we're looking for in the signals. But what I like about the quick hits also is, you know, if you get some runaway on a 30 minute and then, you know, over here on the quick hits, you start to see all the arrows and all that kind of stuff. You can, it's an exit signal, right? On a shorter term trade. So that's how I use it like that. Um, Rohan from YouTube. Rohan, is that the character from Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, which Delta call to buy once we've identified the set? So by default, I like to buy a 70 Delta, which is typically two to four strikes in the money. Now that's what I call for a normal stock. Okay, now for, so I, and I typically like to go at least 30 days out to give myself the gift of time. Okay. 
you know, is that something I would do for like a Goldman Sachs? Now for SMCI, okay, that's hard to do because if you go at, you know, Delta 70, 30 days out, the option's like $180. That's $18,000, right? Or whatever it is, 1800 bucks. No, it is. Yeah. So it's a lot. So in that case, then I'll typically do a call debit spread where I buy like the at the money and then sell maybe the Delta 30. Um, but my favorite is just like, let's buy the Delta 70, like 30 days out. You can go out further if you want and then allow the play a chance to, on you know, to go. Um, on a QQQ index play, how do you prioritize the other squeezes that need to be in alignment? Um, yeah, okay. So if we go back and we look at that, right? And what we want to look at on something like that is do, 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 where to go. There we go. Okay, so yeah, Peloton, of course. So if we look at the cues here and say, okay, what are we looking for? Well, if the cues are going to go, so, you know, obviously we don't need everything here, right? But if the cues are going to go, if I see that there's a squeeze, you know, it's like, okay, there's a squeeze on the cues or, or you know, whatever. I want to see XLK and XLC. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's like, oh, awesome. Now, if Microsoft and Meta and Apple are also squeezing, that's great. Um, but, you know, so go the sector, so go the stocks in the sector. So I've got this up here because, you know, it's like, wow, here's a squeeze. And man, we got squeezes. Everybody's squeezing. You know, this is like a dance party. This is like a mosh pit. That tends to be the cleanest move. Okay. So so that's what I like there. And you can see there's a big squeeze right here because this whole week's been waiting about the numbers that are coming out tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. So if we're going to do ES, and I got to remember, so... So typically, of course, there's going to be a couple of things that happen if you do ES. Okay. Well, first of all, it's doing the overnight session, and there's no overnight session on these. On these. So what you can do is you, you could add more futures contracts in here and just say, you know what, let's uh, let's go in here because you can manually add this in. It's like, okay, well, maybe we need to change this to you know NQ, and then if we do that, you'll see that that one now is a regular line, right? But um, so you can do that. You can play around with that. And, and and I'm a fan of the ES. Obviously, I'm watching that during the day. I found typically, though, if you put SPX um, or, um, you know, SPY or QQQ, it's a little cleaner. Uh, but you can also look, obviously, and see if there's a squeeze on the S&Ps, too. But the main thing is, of course, the S&Ps are trading 24 hours in those indexes. Um, you can track them 24 hours, but the real signals happen when there's volume, you know, the overnight session, isn't a lot of volume. Oh, AB, yeah. Airbnb. We haven't looked at that. Okay. So let me go in here and well, let's do, uh, meta. So meta on the weekly, you can see is fired, right? That's a weekly chart. If we look at the daily chart. Um, you can see that there is no squeeze. It happened a while ago. Uh, but then, like, so a trade I'm doing right now is on the 30-minute chart. So, because there's squeezes all over the place as it's gotten some consolidation. Uh, Airbnb, I have not looked at. So, if we, you know, same thing here, but let's let's step back here and look at a daily chart. So, you got Airbnb, beautiful squeeze. And, of course, we got squeezes on QQQ. I don't know what other sectors it's in. Um so that one I'd, I'd have to look up. I just don't know off the top of my head. But I love that there's a squeeze. Obviously, there's, there's some other squeezes here too. And then, you know, what's happening on the weekly chart here? I have no idea. Um, a squeeze fired, you know, and since then we've had a nice little bit of a rally. So, yeah, it's kind of a nice nice way to look at it. Um, Derek, have you experimented at all with buying strangles or calendar stra strangles when you see a squeeze, especially when the market overall has? Yeah, so I so I'm not I don't do a lot of calendars. I'm um, no particular reason. If I'm gonna do a, do a strangle, I'll just do a straight strangle. I kind of like the idea of strangles here, Derek, because you know we're kind of a little lofty. Um, you know the market's a, a little tired. I say that. I mean, I don't know for sure, right? 
it's just that you know we're you know eighteen thousand is pretty is it is extended resistance as is fifty one hundred on SPX if you're looking at Fibonacci extensions and stuff like that. So I like the idea here of going like you know what let's buy a straddle or let's if we're gonna buy a call let's buy an out of money put in case it does reverse. So I do I love options because you can structure stuff like that uh, which is great. Um. How do you look at options flow? So options flow, um, I personally just use Spot Gamma. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, it's just somebody that we we partner with, and then you can see kind of options flow uh, that's happening. And you can kind of, you know, again, you can kind of use it in conjunction. You know, I, I always have this off to the side. You know, here's the S&P 500 today, and you can see that, man, the put flow is pretty strong to the downside. And of course, it's, you know, everything kind of sold off there at the end. If we look at, say, Goldman Sachs, on the other hand, um, you had nice, strong flow, option flow into the close. And so that's kind of nice to look. And that's, you know, that's something that we'll, you know, utilize as well. All right. All right, everybody. Well, I'll just review this real quick again. Uh, we've been together for an hour and 17 minutes. I want to respect everybody's time. And again, just keep in mind that we've got two things happening here. And uh, we've got a workshop coming up on March 9th. And where I'm going to talk about updated ways to use the new Triple Squeeze Pro, okay, updated from the uh, Triple Squeeze. Um, and then the original recording of the class will also be included. So, you know, I'd encourage you to look at that. Otherwise, you know, you can get that and start using it, which is great. And then um, the layup indicator, of course, which is, a, you know, a little bit more for momentum, more for kind of day trading. Um, that comes with the Elite Package. And, of course, the Elite Package also comes with the triple squeeze and all that kind of fun stuff. But then you also get uh, that layup tool. That's the convergence, um, that pre-recorded layup class. And then the two days of live trading, which, you know, if you've never done that, I was, people always ask, well, why, why the live trading? I thought we were doing a workshop. Well, it's like golf. The only, golf is a sport that you learn by doing it. And you can read three, if you've never played golf before and your boss is like, hey, Tom, you know, Ted dropped out. Can you join us on a foursome? And if you have any degree of ambition, you're going to be like, uh, yeah. And you've never played before. And so over the weekend, you read three books on golf. What's going to happen is you're going to show up. You're going to know more about golf than anybody else there. But what's going to happen when you tee up on that first hole and swing back and hit the ball? It's going to be a disaster because you've never swung a club. And not only that, but you if you've swung a club, you haven't done it under the eye of a professional golf instructor. So that's the same thing with trading. So in trading, the idea is, hey, we're going to look at Marcus live. I'm going to be trading my account live. Um, and then if you have questions like, oh my God, this chart, what do I do here? We do that live too. So it's like, you know, it's like swinging the golf club. And um, golf and trading have a lot of, it's funny, I don't, I used to play golf before I had kids. And then, you know, once you have kids who has five hours, but trading and golf have a lot, a lot of similarities. Because if you, you know, if you go up, to a golf ball and you clear your mind and you just relax and hit the ball, it generally does pretty well. But if you go up to that golf ball and you're super pumped because the last three shots you killed it, you know, that adrenaline is going to, you know, cause your swing to shank or whatever, and you're not going to really hit it too well. And it's the same thing in trading. And I always say kind of a secret to trading is on each and every trade, just try to act like you're a professional trader, clear your mind of everything that's happened uh, up to that point, you know, and just, I'm going to treat this trade like a professional trader. I'm going to have a well thought out, well planned trade. I might even use a limit order and I'm going to do position size correctly. And, and that's, it's really that simple, but you got to do it every time. Cause if you forget, then you just kind of go back into those old habits, which is no fun. Okay. Um, Mike, how would you compare this to the sandbox and, and uh, quant pivots? So I use both. So the sandbox and quant pivots, of course, are kind of more for those intraday uh, fluctuations. Um, you know, especially around the first part of the day. And I like that. And whereas these, the layup and the squeezes are more for kind of catching that momentum. So I like they're very complimentary. All right, guys, gals, I will leave this up. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, for those of you that are joining us on the 9th, I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, for those of you that saw these tools and like them and want to make it part of your repertoire, um, that's how you get them. And I'm um, looking forward to doing this journey with you guys. Have a good one and see you on the other side.